Welcome to the St. Michael Weekday Meditations. My name is Bob Johnston, and I'll be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is blessing. Once you've been transformed by God's love, you can't help but want to share that love with others. This Easter, let's learn how to bless one another by sharing the grace and love of Christ with our friends and neighbors. Joining Christians everywhere during this Easter season, we proclaim with joy, Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Here ends the reading. Joy. Joy, that's part of the Easter season. Joy, that was the final part of our reading today as well. Jesus said, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. What is joy? Merriam-Webster defines it as the emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune. Jesus wants us to have well-being. He wants us to have a mature joy. How do we have that joy? It seems the answer is stay connected. He says, abide in me, remain in me. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. We get life and power in him. That allows so much in living. I know one pastor who defines ministry as meeting others' needs with God's resources. Likewise, we're talking about abiding in God and seeing fruit from that, God's power and love working through us. I think of all the things that we can do that are not possible if we're not abiding in Him. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said she and her sisters could not care for the people on the bottom of society in India where they otherwise would die alone unless the sisters could encounter Jesus and the people, a form of abiding. As we abide, God can work in and through us to help others and to concomitantly bring us joy. There are many who say as we abide, we learn to love in ways not possible unless God is loving in and through us. I know another pastor who, in teaching the process of forgiving others, particularly in really hard situations, teaches a prayer like this. Lord, I struggle to forgive, whoever the person's name is, by your grace and power in me, help me to forgive. God in us helps us as we abide. God also brings a deep joy as we abide. How do we abide? Well, that's the whole of discipleship in a way. Learn the rhythms of grace, of following our Lord, His Word, His example. One Anglican scholar from Oxford says of this passage that we remain in Him by doing two things. Quote, We must remain in the community that knows and loves Him and celebrates Him as its Lord. There's no such thing as a solitary Christian. We can't go it alone. The second thing he says is this, we must also remain as people of prayer and worship in our own intimate private lives. We must make sure to be in touch, in tune with Jesus, knowing him and being known by him. 
This season, as we think about blessing others, here's a great way to do that. Share that joy. Live it and tell others where it comes from. Let's embrace joy. Abide. I'll end with a prayer, a version of which I say almost every day. Dear God, you are love and you abide in us. Help us to know your unconditional love through and through and share it. Help us always to know our worth as your children and as your creatures made in your image. God, you call us not to worry about material things, but to seek you first. Help us to be secure as we remain open to receive and as we follow. Finally, living in that place, help us bless others in your name and to your glory. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.